Okay, we're here today to show you how to create a sequence for Pilot Wave. We're going to sequence the Maris Hydra, which is a three part pitch shifter, then the Strymon Riverside, which is a distortion pedal, and the Chase Bliss Womb Tone, which is a phaser. All three of these pedals can accept MIDI commands to control different parameters, which is like virtually turning the knobs. So the first thing you need to do is plug in the USB MIDI device that came with your Pilot Wave into your computer, then plug the connector that says out to the MIDI in on Pilot Wave. Now Pilot Wave can control 10 different parameters at a time, and they can be on the same pedal or on different pedals. Today we're going to program three pedals at the same time. So after you get the MIDI device hooked up to your computer, open up Google's Chrome browser. If you don't already have it, you'll need to go download it. It's a free download from Google. And then head over to stepaudio.net. And then once you're there, click on the Support tab. And then under the Support tab, today we're going to be using the Pilot Wave Preset Programmer. So click on that. So when you're on the Preset Programmer page, you can scroll down a little bit here. And you'll see choose a MIDI device and your USB MIDI interface should show up under that menu. If your device doesn't show up there, follow the instructions at the top of the page to enable MIDI devices in Chrome. Next thing we're going to do is choose what preset number we're going to write. And we're just going to leave this on one. But if you wanted to program a different preset, just type in a different number or use the arrow keys. The next thing to decide is how many program changes you're going to send. Well, we have three pedals connected to Pilot Wave today, so we're going to send three different program changes. No matter which pedal you use, it's a good idea to create a baseline preset to call up using one of these program changes, so your pedal sounds pretty close to where you want it to be for the sequence. In this case, we have baseline presets set up for each of the three pedals, the Hydra, the Riverside, and the Womb Tone. In fact, we're using the baseline presets that are available on stepaudio.net at the Quick Start page for Pilot Wave. Now, the Quick Start page is a real easy way to get up and running with a number of popular pedals, including all three we're using today. In addition, there's a baseline preset programmer page, which allows you to create presets for MIDI-enabled devices. And you can use this page to create presets for your MIDI pedals, even when you're not using Pilot Wave. For each of the programs, there's also a space where you can type in some information to remind yourself what pedal is being controlled. So for this first one, we're going to use the Hydra. And it's on channel 5. And we're going to use preset 4, which is the baseline preset. So we'll select channel 5 here. And then we send program 4. And as you, as you click this and change the program number, it actually sends that program change out to your pedal so you can see it change and make sure it's getting on the preset that you want and that it sounds the way you want. So for the second device, that's going to be our Riverside Distortion. And again, it's preset 4. We use preset 4 for all of them just because it makes it easy to remember if you always use the same preset number. So again, as we switch the different presets here, you'll be able to hear... <laughs> Now for the third pedal, that's going to be the Womb Tone, and that's channel 6 in our setup. And again, we're going to use preset number 4 on there. Now you always want your different MIDI pedals on different channels. That way you can send data out, and only the pedal that's on that channel is going to receive that data. So then the next question is what type of sequence we want. I'm going to show you some of the different types later, but while you're programming a sequence, the easiest one to work with is tap tempo. And the reason for that is you can hear how the different steps sound next to each other, one after another. After we're all done programming, we'll decide which type of sequence sounds the best. Next, you want to choose the number of steps for your sequence. You can go all the way up to 16 steps. To keep this video a reasonable length, I'm going to just do a four-step sequence today. Then you select the number of sequence measures. This determines how fast the sequence plays back relative to a quarter note. If you have one measure, 
then the entire sequence takes one quarter note. If you have two measures, it plays back half as fast. So that's what we'll do while we're programming it here. The next question is whether you want to block incoming clock. Well, Pilot Wave can sync up to MIDI clock from a DAW or another pedal that can send MIDI clock, but most of the time you want to block that clock from getting to your downstream pedals, the pedals that Pilot Wave is controlling. This is because a lot of pedals, if they receive a MIDI clock, they're going to lock onto it and start repeating or oscillating or, you know, doing delays, whatever it is, in time with that clock instead of in time with the sequence that we're sending it. So you usually will probably want to block MIDI clock. Then the next question is whether you want to use the existing tempo. This question is here because if you have multiple tap tempo sequences you're going to string together while you're playing live, sometimes you want to tap in a tempo and then have that tempo carry over to the next sequence. So if you know you're going to be coming to this sequence from another tap tempo sequence, you hit yes. And that way, whatever tempo existed when you got to this sequence, it'll just keep going. But in this case, we're going to let it recall a stored tempo, and then we can dial in whatever tempo we want here. And we'll demonstrate how this works in a bit. We'll just say, I don't know, 54 beats a minute. And it tells us we're on step one right now, but we don't have any steps yet because we haven't done any control changes. So this is the heart of what Pilot Wave does. It sends out control changes to pedals to control parameters. That means you can control individual settings on these pedals. Like for example, on the Riverside, we'll be able to control the drive, which is the amount of distortion. Or on the Hydra, we'll be able to control each of the three independent pitch shifters separately. So for this demonstration, we're gonna send 10 control changes. And we'll take them one at a time here. So the first thing we're going to do is program control change one. Now we can click on device specific and that lets us select a brand. In this case, we'll select Maris and then the device and we're going to do the Hedra pitch shifter and then we can select which parameter we want to control. The first one we're going to control is the expression pedal. And then you can decide whether you want it to be the same for all steps or not. In this case, we're going to say yes, and we're going to set the expression pedal to zero. That way, Hedra is just going to listen to our pitch shift values instead of trying to alter the pitch shift using some sort of expression value. Now, if your device isn't already in our list, you can look in that device's manual and send it a CC, which is a control change. And you just got to tell it what channel you're on and what controller number, and the rest of the steps are the same. But in this case, again, we're going to go device specific. And we also, we need to put this on channel five because that's what our Hedra pitch shifter is on. So for the first control change of our sequence, we're going to send a value of zero to the expression pedal. Now we'll move on to the second control change. And again, we want to go device specific, put it on the MIDI channel, which is five for the Hedra. Then we'll select it again. We got the Maris heater pitch shifter. And now we're going to do the first pitch. Hedra has three different pitch shifters built into it, which allows you to make chords or interesting harmonies. But here's a shortcut for the Hedra. We're going to actually go and call up the other two pitch shifters here. So there's pitch two, and then for CC4, we're going to call up the third pitch shifter. And I'll show you why in a second here. Now we're going to say same for all steps, and we say zero for pitch shifter three and for pitch shifter two while we get started. The reason for doing this, if you don't, you're going to hear two of the three pitch shifters on a different note. So it's really hard to dial in specific intervals when you have those other two notes playing in the background. So we'll turn off two of the pitch shifters, figure out our sequence, and then we'll bring back in the other two pitch shifters. Okay, so now it's time to actually make the steps of the sequence. The first thing we're going to do is select the pitch values. I want to make this sequence step through a few different pitches. For the first step, though, we're going to use 64, which is unison, which is the actual note you're playing. I'm just going to play an open E here. 
And I found that it's a good idea to just use unison on the first step of a sequence. It gets pretty confusing if you have a shifted pitch on the first step. It's kind of hard to keep your place while you're playing along. So you probably want to use unison or maybe an octave up or octave down on the first step of a sequence. So for the second step, we're going to do a fifth up. And again, I'm just playing the open E here. Then for the third step, let's do, I know, let's do a flatted seventh. And again, it's just the open E. Now for the fourth step, let's do a minor third. So now we have four different pitch intervals. Let's hear how they sound one after another. So what we can do is go back up here where it says play sequence, and I'll just play the open E, and then we'll hit play sequence, and you'll hear it. We'll do that again. Now, you can also scrub the sequence, which means moving this slider back and forth to hear the notes that way. So now we'll go down to the second pitch shifter. And what I'm going to do is just copy what I did on the first pitch shifter. So we'll say, no, not the same for all four steps. So let's see, we have 64, 98. So we'll do 64 here. 98. Then 109 and 81. Okay, so now we have two of the pitch shifters playing the same thing, and we'll, we'll play the sequence again for you. Okay, so now we'll go down and we'll do the third pitch shifter, and we'll say no, not the same for all the values, but we're going to mix it up here. What I like to do with the Hedra especially is have two of the pitch shifters on the same note, and then have the third pitch shifter an octave down which gives it that kind of octave feel, makes it a lot heavier guitar tone. So for the first one, it's going to be an octave down. You can hear that heavier tone already. Then we want that fifth again, but this time an octave down. Now notice when I move the slider, all the control changes for that step get sent, not just the one you're working on. That way you can hear how the entire step's going to sound. So I'm going to play this and move it down to a fifth. And the next one, we're going to want that flatted seventh. And then finally, the minor third. Now you can hear the guitar has a lot fatter sound. So let's play that. It's already sounding better. Okay, so now we've done the pitch shifting. For control change number five here, we're gonna do the Strymon Riverside. We have that on channel three. We have the Riverside, and then we're doing the drive level, which is the amount of distortion. So let's dial in the first step. So we'll keep the distortion fairly light on the first two steps. Then on the third step, which is the snare beat, we're going to make it pop. And then we'll leave a fair amount on the fourth step. So 
So now let's take a quick listen to that. So now for control change number six, we're going to do the level for the Riverside, but we're going to come back and fine tune this afterwards because it's nice to set the level so each of your steps has about the same volume. So we'll come back and do the level in a minute. So for number seven, we're going to choose the womb tone. And again, that's on channel six. So Chase Bliss, womb tone. And the first thing we're going to do is the depth. That's the depth of the phase. But what goes hand in hand with it on the next one here, we'll dial in Chase Bliss, womb tone. And that's the expression controller. So the depth and the expression controller kind of work together so you can dial in that place in the sweep of the phaser that you want to listen to for that particular step. So we'll start working with the depth here. Now we'll use the expression to fine tune it. Okay, so let's take a listen and hear how that sounds. Okay, that's getting closer. So for control change nine, again, we're gonna use the Chase Bliss Womb Tone. And we're gonna adjust the mix level. This is the amount of the phaser that you actually hear. Now let's go back up to the levels because the harder you drive a phaser, the more you hear that phaser sound. So let's work on the levels on the Riverside here. Okay, let's take a listen to that. So we're really close. One last step of fine tuning here. If we want it to really have a balanced sound. The womb tone has a real nice uh, volume control on it. And we can kind of dial in each of the steps so they have uh, roughly the same volume. So now we've got our preset pretty close to where we want it. So let's send it out as a tap tempo sequence and then you can play along with it and kind of hear how it sounds one after another. <laughs> You'll also notice that when you hit send preset, this little dialog box comes up and asks you if you want to save it. Well, you can save your preset using that name that's already there, or you can type in your own name, but we're not going to save it yet because I want to try out this sequence a few different ways. Now there's lots of different sequence types. Let's try it out as a rebound saw up. That's where the sequence plays to the end and then it stays there until you release the button. So we'll make it go faster. We'll just do one measure. It'll go twice as fast as it was with the tap tempo. Then we hit send. We'll try a one shot sequence here. That's where when you press the button, it plays through just like a tap tempo, but it only goes one time each time you press the button. Okay, well, let's try it as a split sequence. That's where it'll play the first half of the sequence and then wait till you release. Then when you release, it plays the second half of the sequence. Finally, we'll send it out as a two-step, which is where the sequence is under full manual control. Each time you press the button, the sequence advances a step, and then it advances again when you release the button. Now the trick to play in two-step sequences is you gotta hold down the button longer than you normally would, so you can hear those even-numbered steps. Now 
Now if we want to save it, we just hit Save to Computer. And it puts it in your Downloads folder. Now down the road, if you want to change the sequence or copy it, modify it, whatever, you just hit Choose File, go to your Downloads folder, or wherever you've placed it, and there it is. And you hit Open and it loads it back up. If you want to copy it, all you have to do is just change the preset number, hit Send Preset again, just say, okay, this one's preset two now. And that makes it real convenient. If you have a preset that you like that's a good starting point, you can go in, just give it a different preset number, modify it as you like, and hit send, and there you are. You've copied your preset. So there you have it. That's how you program a sequence on Pilot Wave with three different pedals. Of course, you can just use a single pedal. You don't have to use 10 parameters. You know, you can keep this as simple as you want. Point is, just get creative, try things out, see what happens. Just let your ears be the guide. There's lots more information over at stepaudio.net.